Uh, first thing is that uh, I did want to introduce uh, some of you who've already met a particular brother, but um, he's placing membership here. Um, he uh, moved here from the northwest part of the United States, and uh, he's used to a lot of rain. He was a part of the Seattle church for five years, lived in Portland, a few other places, but uh, like I said, he's, he's been here a few months, and I want to introduce uh, Carlin Way. He's in the back. Stand on a car. That's great. Great to have you. Uh, and I really encourage you to get, Carlin, get to know Carlin. He's... Uh, He's a man who deeply loves to study the Bible. And, uh, and so he brings that to the table, plus many other things, I'm sure. I won't share what they all are. We've had a few lunches. We'll, I'll just leave that between him and I. But uh, it's all good. Uh, the other thing is not on the announcements that we had earlier, since there was only like 10 announcements this morning, right? Um, is that uh, this is a five-week, uh, midweek month. Okay, there's like two months of the year, I think, that uh, there are five Wednesdays. And so the last one is like March 30th. Um, we haven't decided, but we are kicking around the idea for that particular night is to, to go see a movie. And, but what like I said, we're, there's a couple spiritual movies that are out. Uh, we don't know yet. And you know with, with movies is sometimes you can plan something and then because they're not bring in a lot of revenue, they just change it, and it's gone. So we'll let you know, but that's the 30th. It'll be probably optional, uh, because due to people's work schedules, and uh, like I said, it's, it's possible that these two movies may not even be showing. Uh, I should know something tomorrow, uh, but it's an idea to do something a little different, something kind of fun, and you know, movies are always tricky because... You're like, somebody's watching and you're like, I can't believe you're watching that movie. You know? Everybody has different, okay, consciences when it comes to movies. Uh, but that's a whole other lesson. I won't get into that. Um, I can get in trouble. So let's not do that. Um, the other thing, I did want to talk about the uh, Passport book for a minute. We are going to talk about boundaries. And uh, most of us have been in this book and trying to have uh, the daily quiet times and, and that kind of thing. And, and I've even shared, if you haven't done it, even if you haven't done it, it's not too late. You can catch up. There's still books in the back that can be bought because they're short, very short, quiet times. Now, the idea was not for us, as we looked at these challenges, to read them and then, because you didn't do them, become discouraged. That's not the intent, the idea of doing this task for yeah. And, you know, some of the challenges in there actually are, are very challenging to do. And, you know, for example, one of them was what, have a yard sale. Well, it's 25 degrees. I don't really think... We get that, okay? I get that. But, you know, some of us are like, it's in the book. We've got to do it. You know, and you're kind of ruthless with these kind of things. And so I'm saying, ease up. It's okay. All right? I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm going to say it. Because I know some of you are determined. But... This next week is a little more, what I would say, doable. Yeah. It's not that the other ones weren't, but they were very, very different. Yeah. Okay, like everybody sleeping in one room. Remember that one? Or not spending any money in an entire day. But this is more on the mission. So like day 19, share your faith with somebody who is at work. Or like a cashier or a waitress or at your workplace. Yeah. Or invite a a friend or a couple or a neighbor over for dinner and, and, and share with them. You know, Annie and I reached out to one of our neighbors and, and invited them over earlier this week and uh, maybe it was a week ago. And, and they haven't necessarily been the, the most... I'm not gonna, I shouldn't give away their names, but I'm not going to say that. Friendliest neighbors in the world. And um, it wasn't Augusto. He already, he already. I do borrow a lot of things from him, and I'm really grateful. He lives down the street. It's helpful. Um, and uh, but, anyways, it's very interesting because you never think. And, and so we invited them, and he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> and so yesterday, um, the wife brought over treats that she had made for Hershey, our dog. 
And I mean, just a little bit. We, we haven't even had him over yet, but it just kind of opened the door. And, and I'm like, I wouldn't give anything to that dog. I mean... <laughs> I mean... That, that is, my dog has another name. It's not Hershey. It's Houdini for escaping. Uh, that's a separate... Boy, he keeps me going. Okay. Uh, but you know, you, you, you reach out and all of a sudden you, you think somebody's not going to be receptive because of X, X, and X. And all of a sudden you're like, wow. And maybe this neighbor, nobody has ever invited them over for dinner. We don't know. Until we try. Yeah. So I'm really glad, I'm glad Augusta and Suzanne work on, live on our street, and we actually work on our street together. Um, but we do work together, and we, we we reach out to neighbors together, and that's that's one of the other challenges. If you read, it talks about share your faith with somebody else. Okay, we can do these things. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Share your faith with the most intimidating person you can think of. It's kind of the Goliath challenge. And so for you know for me I'm gonna I'm gonna go after Trump. How about that? <laughs> if I could. Boy, does he need prayers? Okay, like the rest of them. Um, that's all I'll say about that. I'll get in trouble if I say anything more. Um, anyway, so you guys with me here? So that's the idea, and I, I think it's been a great exercise. It can help your faith, your perspective, because we can get caught up in what we just do in this country. And the world does not revolve around the United States of America. Okay? It does not. And we are not, even though we may act like the police force of the world. Okay? We should not. Okay? There's many other people all over the world who are in need of the gospel and the need right here in New Britain, or we would say Hartford. Okay? We all need to hear the word. Now, this past Tuesday... Um, we had a once a month. We have what's called an Outer New England staff meeting, yeah. and during that time, we we have uh, you know Jimmy or whoever. Uh, it'd be Rhode Island, the other churches in Connecticut, uh, a couple other churches in Massachusetts, and we get together as a staff. And this past time, uh, Jimmy did a lesson on uh, something that he said he's never done, wow. and I'm like, okay, Jimmy Allen's done a lot of lessons. Yes, yes. And, and he's heard a lot of, heard a lot of lessons and then I'm thinking I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody do a lesson on this in fact I haven't done it and I said well well maybe I can I'm going to steal that <laughs> and, and so um, I, I actually have Jimmy's notes I did kind of customize it just for you guys <laughs> Because I wouldn't want it to be a complete theft. I want to be customized. <laughs> right? and, and so, I, I wanted to share some of the things because I think what Jimmy talked about is something that's very aligned with what we're doing on boundaries. Yes. And the question you got to ask is, you know, do you have any boundaries in your life? Do you set boundaries? Because when we don't, we usually end up in places we don't want to be at. And so, and so what it is, is that, um, let's see, here we go. We're going to talk about gluttony. Aren't you excited? No, you're not. This is what, you know, Jimmy was sharing that we just don't talk about. Yeah. He read this one, the Dallas Morning uh, News article, Are Churches Too Skittish to Address Gluttony? In other words, do we, we don't have the backbone to address it. As he says in this little quote, it says, Most, they praise God and they pass the pastries simultaneously. They give their hearts to Jesus and they give their bellies to Krispy Kreme. <laughs> yeah. Now, how many of us love to eat? I do. I'm not ashamed. Okay? I love it. In fact, you know, most cultures everywhere, there's, there's a fascination. There's a pride with food. Cuisine, as we might call it. Think what it, the French may say, right? Cuisine. 
You know, commercials. They're on food. Restaurants. And we've, we've been influenced for years and years and years, but this kind of thing of, of gluttony, we're going to deal with more the spiritual side yeah. versus what we might all be thinking is just the physical side. Because it's, it's not the easiest thing to talk about. We're not talking about, per se, a weight issue. Okay? Now, I've found in my own life, and maybe you have, as, as you get older, it gets harder. Yeah. Uh, when I was a college student, I've said this before, and I would order a, a Domino's large pizza, and back in, that, in those days, they delivered to the dorm. And it came with four large uh, Cokes, or I don't know if they do Pepsi, I don't remember at the time. Four large ones. And I get this large pizza, and this is after I've already had dinner. Okay, and I'm just being honest. And especially Friday and Saturday night, right around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, it's perfect. And, uh, and, and so, it would be delivered, I go down. And there were all the brothers, other disciples who lived in my dorm. And they knew I had this habit. And so I get the pizza. Of course, I had to lock the door. <laughs> and the scavengers would be out. I mean. And I would eat that entire pizza myself and all four of the large Cokes. And back then, it didn't matter. Because, you know, in the college, I'd stay up to 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock. And you, you would because of all the caffeine. Um, and, but I didn't gain any weight. I could do what I want. As I've gotten older, I eat way less and I still gain weight. I'm trying to figure out how that works. So we're not talking about just you know something like a weight issue. Some of us in this room, more than us, we have health issues. Some of us have... A uh, thyroid condition that affects your metabolism. There's, it, it, it's, you do everything you can to try to quote unquote stay in shape, but you still gain weight. I have some very close friends of mine that they're, I mean, if they just look at food, they gain weight. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's, it's like, so I don't want us to miss what we're getting at this morning. Okay? It's not the easiest subject. Because as we're viewed, by the way, right. As a culture, by many other cultures, as a gluttonous culture. Now the Bible word is, is used more is debaucherous or debauchery. Gluttony is kind of the same thing. But that's what we're viewed. We, we, everything's big, large. I mean, it's, it's so much in us. You know, I visited my brother once in Texas. He lives in Dallas, my younger brother. I have two younger brothers, two sisters. And I go to Texas and everything there is big. And I, I, I went to his house. And, and he, he has a good salary, but... I mean, he, he's... The house was huge. And I'm like, Mike, you don't need this. But it was like way cheaper than... What it cost even in Arizona? And Arizona is not that expensive, relatively. Okay, big. We we have big everything. Refrigerators, freezers. We have we have freezers just for the basement, not not for the upstairs. That's for those who are hunters that you, you put all your food in that you kill. I mean, and so this our culture, the size of our cars. And this is, this is the place we live in. And so I hope you view it as a blessing. Okay, this is where we live. A lot of people don't live the way we live. And so we're more prone to fall into this than maybe some other places. But we're not just talking about food. We're talking about other addictions. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be pornography. Obviously food. It can be, which is probably one of the greatest ones right now, entertainment. Or social media. This all-consuming, I've got to be entertained. And 
But wasn't that what it was in Roman times? Yeah. You know, if you travel throughout the, uh, Italy and you, they have places everywhere where, the, where there was a, a coliseum or a, a theater. And they're, th- and they're, they're amazing places. They still exist. You go to Verona, Italy. Okay, I grew up in Verona, Pennsylvania. Now I'm in Verona. Um, you go to Verona, there, there's a Coliseum. They still have concerts in this theater. It's, it's 2,000 years old. We can't even make a stadium last 100 years in our country. I mean, when they, the owners want to build one after 40. So we're talking about something that's a deeper, deeper issue. So what is gluttony? What is gluttony? It's an inordinate desire to consume more than you require. Having a craving for food that conquers you. A glutton is one who runs to the icebox. Icebox. That's really old. Um, That's Jimmy. Sorry. Love you, Jimmy. For a cure of spiritual malnutrition. Gluttony is a lack of self-control. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22-23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. See, it's the last fruit of the Spirit. By definition, it's not self. It's something given to you. We've got to have God be in control, not us. Letting God's Spirit control our lives. This is not just about willpower or self-power and discipline. It's a fruit of the Spirit, so it's, it's God-given. And we need help to grow in our self-control. The Holy Spirit will do that if we allow it. Proverbs verse, uh, 25 verse 28 says... Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. I mean, it could be just our tongue. You know, we, 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 the way we say things. And we just, we let it fly. I'm saying it because it's what I feel. And we just, we lack self-control. And it just goes out. And you, we feel justified. Because this is what I feel. And if I'm feeling it, I'm saying it. Regardless of the damage. Okay? But the Bible says that we've been given the fruit of the Spirit, and what's included in the fruit of the Spirit is what? Self control. What happened? Did you get some of the fruits of the Spirit, not all of them? Did I get some and not all of them? Come on, brother. Sorry, Joe, you don't get that one. You only get you only get this one. I don't think so. You know, Solomon, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, what does it say? Chapter 2, he says, he says, I denied myself no pleasure. In other words, whatever he wanted to do, he did it. He was so entitled. He did whatever he wanted. Where did it lead him to? Emptiness. This is what gluttony or debauchery leads to. And it's hard. And once again, I think the temptation when we hear that word is to think of one thing. We just think of food. And we just think of our weight. And we're going to walk all all discouraged. Can't believe we talked about it at church. Okay? And, And obviously, God knows that we need to eat. Yeah. You die if you don't. Okay? But we're dealing with something that's deeper. It's a spiritual issue. But today, there's, there's so much binging going on. The words used is a popular word. It's indulging in excess. It could be sleep. Alcohol. It could be sports. How about just spending money? Computer and video games. It can be a relationship. Yeah. I want a relationship. You can be just consumed with what you don't have. 
Nowadays, in which it was it's more recent, we can actually watch something, an entire series. Okay? Okay, because of, because of downloads and, you know, on demand. Okay, you don't just watch one episode. I'm going to have, what, what's the, 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 the Walking Dead night? Well, you can't marathon. Well, you can't wake up because you were walking dead. I mean, I mean, I mean, some people they don't even get out of pajamas anymore. I mean, and it's you know it's a whole day, and some of you are laughing because you've done it. All right. So. All right, during your vacation, during your vacation, I mean, I'm not going to say what is a sin and what's not. You just, but when it's consuming to you, in other words, when you don't have self control, that's when it tells you. Okay, that's a problem. When you're, you're, you're being so consumed with what you want. You've seen Harry Potter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you have the Harry Potter weekend. Okay, and, and I understand that, but I mean, how about getting up? Helping somebody for a minute. Well, I, got, I don't want to miss it. Well, you, just pause, okay? Hit the pause button. It can be done. Read it, Joe. Like I said a week ago, now we can just talk to the TV. Pause. Do you know, I mean, there have been, there have been people, especially in, in Asia, that literally, they died playing video games. They have died. And it's not just some fabricated story. They've gone for hours and hours to the neglect of even eating. So one excess to another. And it's in our culture. It's so in our culture. So if it's in the Bible, we can't be afraid to talk about it, right? You know, the devil uses this a lot. And he, he does things. You remember Adam and Eve and he tempts us. Did God really say you can't do this or that? He messes with us. Esau, what did he do? He gave up his birthright over what? A meal. A meal. Stew. I mean, he was famished. He gave into his senses. And I mean... And I don't know, I mean, I just go, what in the world were you thinking? Obviously, you weren't thinking. You were just giving in to your feelings. Proverbs chapter uh, 28, verse 7. He who keeps the laws of discerning son, but a companion of gluttons disgraces his father. Do you guys remember this? Oh, yeah. Super size me. It's a movie. And I mean, I, I do take it with a grain of salt. I know it's a movie. It's a documentary slash movie about a guy who ate McDonald's every day for 30 days. That's the only thing he did. 5,000 calories plus per day. I mean, and it's a very interesting movie to watch, but the impact that it had on this guy's health. I mean, wow. It, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's all about overdoing. So you go to, to McDonald's. I don't like McDonald's personally. And you, you get your order. And what do they ask? Small? Medium? Or large? Or... Super size. I don't know if they still do it because of the movie. Maybe they changed it. Maybe they say extra large. That sounds a little more PC, right? They don't say it. They just say large now? Medium large. Medium or large. Well, I went to what other place was it? Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. Or, or what is it? The Starbucks. I mean, small. Me- they don't say small. It's what? Grande? Tall? Alright, I mean, you know what I'm saying. Okay, but we could survive on the small, by the way. And, but it's just, it's just simple. I mean, we, in, in our culture. I, lived, I said I lived in Las Vegas. Annie and I did almost two years. 
And you would go to buffets. Easy place to have an appointment. By the way, they expect you to stay there. I mean, literally, you, you, almost all the casinos had it. And the idea is that you have to walk through the casino. It's never, there's a side entrance. It's all by design. Where they place the machines, all by design. Okay, there's a total psychology to it. So in order to get to a restaurant that you want to go to, you got to walk past the machines. And you're thinking, what's a quarter? And so is everybody else. And what, what, what's the Vegas thinking? Thank you. That's what they're thinking. And you go in and these buffets. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do it once. But I mean, you can be there to the point that you have to carry you out. I mean, <laughs> you're going to need a crane. And I mean, that's what it feels like. I mean, oh my gosh, I can't move. And, and it's, once again, it's, it, it plays into this excess. And it's all for, you know, one steak and eggs. What used to be a dollar and uh, 95 cents. And it was like a pound. That was a huge steak. Brothers would all go there. <laughs> We're there! <laughs> Gotta get our meat! Gotta get our protein! <laughs> right? And you know, you go there and you have your protein and we justified it. Why did we justify it? And I, I did too. You know what my line was? I'm not eating the rest of the day. I'm fasting. <laughs> Doesn't that sound very spiritual? I mean, doesn't that sound like, wow, bro, that's a really great idea. You're fasting. Can I be inspired by you? Well, how, how many, how many eggs did you have? How, how big was your steak? I mean, you eat that, you're not, you, you could go for a couple of days. I mean, and so this is a thing that gets in us, and this is the culture we live in. It's a battle. We all face it. We can't be afraid to talk about it. So what's the real issue? Turn to Mark. Come on, brother. Chapter 7. Mark 7. And even as I was studying, I started looking this up. Um, You know, one of the things is I was looking some of this stuff up and digging deeper... Uh, and I even looked at this other place where there's, there's sermons and stuff, and they didn't use the word uh, gluttony. What they used was acceptable sins. Acceptable sins. And so, in certain places, certain sins are quote unquote, they're more acceptable in the church because we don't talk about it. Mark. And it says in verse 17, it says. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on to say, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, Come evil thoughts, sexual morality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. So what's the real issue? It's not the food, and it's not necessarily the amount of food. It's your heart and my heart. That's the issue. Are we depending on God? Are we trying to put something else? Are we trying to to fill the void with an addiction? But you you pick what that addiction is. Mm -hmm. Come on, Joe. Because we can go, okay, the brothers who go to CR, they're the ones who need all this stuff. Yeah. And they're going, amen. They didn't even say amen. No, 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 I don't want. All right? But all of us have some things that we tend to be addicted to. Sure. It might be use of our time. 
as Jean shared about being selfish with our time. We we just can't let go of certain things. It's a heart issue. And the temptation that even the apostles felt was to blame. And when Jesus said, no, 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 no. It's not about all this. And He says, are you so dull? In other words, He's saying, are, are you dense? Are you thick? Are you calloused? Those aren't necessarily encouraging words. Right? They're not. He's like, they're trying, you know. You, you, my dad would say to me, he goes, well, did you not think? No, Dad, I didn't think. <laughs> what were you thinking? Yeah. When you threw a mud ball at a car, we weren't thinking. We were just in the moment. What were you thinking when you set off an M80 in front of a neighbor? What were you thinking? Did you think that they could have a heart attack? No, we thought about having a heart attack running from you. That's what we thought. I mean, you know, you don't go there. But Jesus is saying, look, out of men's hearts, and what we do, and what I want to do is blame my circumstances, my feelings. I deserve a break today. I need more me time. And this gets in and it impacts us. That's the real issue. In Philippians chapter 3, yep. verse 18 and 19, it says, For as I've often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is their destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. I'm like, okay, when have I heard anybody preach on their God is their stomach? We don't hear it. You see, what we got to do is delight in the Lord. What we've got to do, Psalm 34, is taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And John it talks about Jesus is going to give us water that we will never thirst. Okay, God is the one who's going to fill, fulfill our needs. And so, what's the solution? What's the solution? Number one, recognize the unique role of your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19-20 through 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Okay, we've got to honor God with our body. Hopefully I put the right one up there. I can't see it. That was a prior. I'm one behind. There you go. Okay, so that's the first thing. Number two is when you've had enough, here's the solution. What do we do? Stop. Okay? You're on Walking Dead. Like I said, I don't care for that show personally, but you're on Walking Dead. You've seen one show. Stop. Go to sleep at a reasonable time. Stop. we got to stop. A lot of times that's our problem. We don't stop. Think about this. You know, you go, uh, I, I get gas out of Costco. You go to Costco to get your gas, and it's full, and then you just keep pouring the gas out. It's pouring all over your car. What would you think if somebody's doing that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay, you're taking a bath. One of your kids is taking a bath. The water's filling up. And it, then it fills up and the water's going all over the floor. And the kid just stays in there. This is great. <laughs> what we should we do? We should, we should stop. It's pretty obvious. You, you, you're full. Yeah. Okay, you hit the max. Just stop. Right. And we don't stop so often. And so often. How often have we re- had regret? Okay, let's say you have a, a drinking problem. If you can't stop, then you shouldn't drink. Please, brother. Yep, yep. Some people can't stop. Don't, don't try to coax them into, oh, what's wrong with you? You, can, you, you? you should be able to handle it. If they can't handle it, then they shouldn't. They've they got to be able to stop. Right. Okay, if you can't stop when it comes to your Big Mac... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how many. Come on. 
But, I mean, at some point, you've got to stop. That's what helps us stop and, and, and deal with this gluttonous temptation. If we would just stop. Am I saying that you can't have a piece of cake? What do you think? Am I saying when we go to the movies next week that we can't have popcorn? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can't have a butter. Too bad. No, I'm not saying. <laughs> We're all going to sit there at the movie theater looking. I can't believe it. Look at you. Looking all self righteous Okay? No, I'm not saying that. Obviously. God said, God created food to be... It's good. It's, it's not a bad thing. And He wants us to actually enjoy it. Yes. But we got to know. And you got to say no to eating disorders. I don't know who has eating disorders in this room. If you're struggling, get help. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to announce it from the housetops, but get some help. Okay. It, it it's taken people out. It's killed people eating disorders. So get help. I know we can feel ashamed if we've had that problem. All right. But get help. Okay. Number three. Participate in fasting. Um, we've been doing this with a book. It's a good thing. Um, I think in America, we look at overeating, we don't look at it as a sin. Like I said, I'm not going to tell you what the line is. That, that's on your conscience and my conscience. You've got to figure that out. Um, but there's a time you know you're full and stop. You know, but what about fasting from other things, not just food? Because all we do is think about is food. Maybe we should be fasting even from from other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about fasting from the internet? How about fasting from social media? So you're not concerned about how many likes you have. Oh, I had a, I had so many likes. I, wow. I wrote something, and a thousand people liked what I wrote. So I feel better about myself today. What? <laughs> you got a thumbs up and it makes you feel better. You see how that messes you up? It's, it's, what if you got a lot of thumbs down? Man, I got a lot of dislikes today. I mean, there is a guy. It's from day 17 in the passport. I tried to look at the links. And uh, basically he decided to, to kill the internet at home. And he runs a website. For a living. Here's what he said. It's not that he doesn't go on the internet at work or other. But here's what he said about home. I have more time to read. Remember that? That concept? Reading? Okay. I have more time to write. Oh my gosh, that's even another concept. Where did that go? I have more time to think. I have more time for friends. I have more time for exercise. I have more time to walk. I am less distracted. I am less stressed. My thoughts are clear and less fragmented. I no longer crave the internet like I once did. My mind is focused on important things. And lastly, I don't have a monthly internet bill. This is just somebody who took a, a practical step. I'm not saying you have to do that. Just give me an example. Fasting. It can clear your mind. And it may, probably for a lot of us, it's not food that we need to fast from. It's something else. Okay? Number four. Pray a new kind of prayer. We normally pray. You know, bless the hands that prepared this meal. Thank you, Annie, for cooking. It was great. All right? May it nourish our bodies. I say that all the time. God is great. God is good. Let us be thankful for our food. We say things like that. It's not necessarily wrong in those things. But what if we prayed like this? Thanks for providing. Help me to stop before I cross any line that is too much. May you be glorified even in the way I eat this meal. There was a, a, a brother, and he was, uh, I believe, in 
I think it was in the Pittsburgh church, if I remember correctly, but, you know, it's been a while. But, so he, he was asked to pray at a wedding. And the wedding was going to have a huge banquet, lots of alcohol, etc. So he gets up and he prays and he said, God, thank you for this incredible wedding. Help nobody in here to fall into the sin of drunkenness or overindulgence, you know. And that's what he prayed. Of course, probably nobody talked to him after that, but I mean... <laughs> and I'm not saying that we should do it, but you can see that he was getting it. Yeah. You can see that he was understanding. Let's, let's be careful here. Yes. Just like we'd be careful in other areas. Let's finish in Galatians chapter 6. Well, Look at this, because I think this is what can really help us. Come on, Joe. I don't believe any of us in here want to be gluttonous. I don't believe that's our intent. Um, I think it's something that sometimes desire takes over. And in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please his spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. You know, what are we feeding? Are we feeding our sinful nature or the Spirit? And when we're feeding the Spirit, eventually the Spirit is going to beat the flesh. And the flesh is not going to have the pull on us if we're doing that. Well, how do you feed the Spirit? Well, you got to feed it with the Word of God. you gotta, you got to pray. I mean, we don't have time to get in all of it, but too often the real root issue, the reason why we're struggling the way we are, is because we're not feeding the Spirit. We're feeding the sinful nature. If I feed my sinful nature, you know what happens to it? It grows. If I feed the Spirit, it also grows. And what happens to the sinful nature? It gets weaker and weaker. And there are things now that I, I'm not tempted with as I was years ago. There's new ones. But if I feed the Spirit... And so look at it. What about your personal time with God? Your Bible study? Your prayer life? Your connection with the body? Those things all feed the Spirit. And we've got to look at those things. And I hope this has helped us. Because it's not about self-discipline, but it's more about God-discipline. We're going to close with uh, just a short video that's uh, from Hope Worldwide about some things. And I think it can help us to have greater boundaries and look for ways that we can do more to make a difference instead of focusing in on ourselves. Amen?